Hi Sharks, my name is Taylor Cleary and for my prob opportunity I chose to do animal abuse in Indiana. So this little picture right here is a picture of my little cat. His name is Ace and I've had him for about four years. And then that dog up there was my old neighbor's dog, but we moved so they're not there anymore. But um, a little story about why this is so important to me is when I was a kid, um, there was a little boy in my neighborhood who, well he wasn't little, but he's my age. but. He, uh, we went to the neighbors to go and like play with the dog. Like it was like a little neighborhood dog where we'd go over to their house and like ask him, can we go play with your dog? And so we would and he took the leash of the dog and just wrapped it around the dog's neck and just sat there and was laughing the whole time as the dog was barking, trying to get away. He threw the dog down and then just walked away. We were all like stunned and shocked. And so ever since then, it's kind of just been like near and dear to my heart to see like animals being abused. Um, so, one of these, well, my problem is animal abuse, and so my research, it was kind of hard to find because there are not very many cases over animal abuse in Indiana, um, but what I did find was in this chart, as you can see at the top, uh, from the age range of 31 to 40, males of about um, uh, 1,431 males are shown to be abusers in reported animal abuse cases. Uh, animal abuse is one of the highest indicators of domestic violence because these abusers of do domestic violence use these animals as kind of like a power play to kind of keep their, I guess, victims in a submissive role and keep them there because they know if they leave that they don't know what's going to happen to the dog or their cat or their whatever animal they have. And approximately 1.5 million animals are euthanized in shelters uh, nationwide every year. So for my solution, I want to start an awareness campaign, possibly with fellow classmate Sarah Gallo, who is working with Puppy Mills, which is a form of animal abuse. I want to start a few fundraisers around town, maybe in the school, and donate animals like um, dog and cat beds, toys, food, and water bowls and blankets to donate to animal shelters that are less fortunate but still have all these animals. And I want to volunteer at the Humane Society in Noblesville to understand what the behavior and the mental status of these abused animals is and just how they're living and really what's happened to them. Thank you, Sharks, for coming. I would be happy to answer any of your questions. That's for Taylor. Yeah, so um, I don't think this is a you know, a really big issue, and um, I know from a really young age, I've always had a heart for animals, and, um, you know, I, at a young age as well, I saw um, a man attack his dog with a shovel, um, and that, I remember that, like, scarred me, and I was, you know, really freaked out by that, and, you know, we tried to call, like, the ASPCA, and, you know, do all those different things, but ultimately, I don't think any action was taken, which is, you know, the sad thing there. Um, but with your solution um, seem to be really targeting kind of helping the animal shelters, what would kind of be your approach to combating the abuse that's happening at the homes of the animals? Like how to get them out of that situation or you know, how do you plan on addressing that? Um, well, I would like with the awareness campaign just to kind of raise awareness to the fact that it does happen and that it's going on in homes and hopefully like if you like someone like walking down the street and they see it, but they've seen these like flyers possibly around like you can call like an animal shelter and they will come and you know help you or just like call so that they know it's going on to hopefully um, make an impact because like you said, mostly nothing ever happens with these cases, which is why there are very few cases that are reported. So I think just an awareness campaign and a fundraiser will help to spread the knowledge that it does happen and it's mostly in homes that no one really sees. Just go ahead. I was just going to ask a follow-up to the awareness campaign. Is So are you trying to make people aware so that if they see something, they call a number to report it or what? what action are you asking people to take? Just like if they see this happening, you know, like, call don't because like I've seen that it happens a lot and you kind of just like walk past it you don't really make like a knowledge of it you just you know let it go put it in the back of your mind and so I think with a campaign or you know a fundraiser or anything it's just like you really understand that it does happen again and that you can do something because I feel like a lot of people who see this happening they're like what can I do is there anything I really can do and so I think with this campaign maybe put a 
number on there for like a shelter who will actually come and pick up the animals who are being abused or yeah yeah have you had a chance to talk to shelters or I have. That? okay I've talked to the um, Humane Society in Noblesville and they don't personally like go out and rescue animals but the ISPCA in Indianapolis they will go out okay and pick that, up animals. that was that, gonna be my question yeah, it's like, do you, you know, I, cause I don't know of a place you call so I, I wonder yeah, if, you've, if you found a place that would go help an animal in need yes. So you do have a place, it's yes. now getting that word out. See, because we don't know it, so I think it's yeah. very admirable for you to get that word out yeah. so people know who to call. Yeah, the ISPCA, they go out and they will um, go to people's houses, they'll pick up like animals that they want to surrender. And a lot of times those animals that are being surrendered, I've learned, is um, those who have been abused because like owners are giving them up so they get out of that abusing household. You know, it'd be neat. It, one of the things I thought you did an excellent job with is um, establishing the problem up front. You made an emotional connection before you even went into the presentation, and that was really captivating. So it kind of it drew me in mm -hmm. to listening, um, and I think that was really powerful. Even telling that story of, you know, and I don't think I've ever asked the question. So to the Humane Society, how, so I know that you've got an abused animal here, but how did that abused animal end up here? Mm -hmm. So almost kind of walking through that story because somewhere there is potentially a hero, right, who yes. called the number mm -hmm. that got that animal where they needed to be. Yeah. So helping other people do that um, yeah. is, is a great initiative. I was gonna say the exact same thing. Uh -huh. you, you know, you, you, you gave your why at the yeah. very beginning. Yeah. And I think for anybody that's doing a project like this, you gotta have a why. And you, when you're trying to educate people up on it and create awareness, you got to have a why. You know, why are yeah. you doing this? And yeah. you did an excellent, excellent job of sharing that with us today. So um, I also wrote down, you know, it's, it's a great link that you have uh, that people that are animal abusers, you know, that could tend to domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is a problem in our society that we need to curb and, and mm -hmm. working on this can help with that, so I think that's excellent. Thank you. And on that point, there are probably other partnerships that I that come to mind for me that uh, would probably help with this awareness when you think of Fisher's Police Department yeah. and some of the uh, domestic abuse um, prevention mm -hmm. organizations because they are very aware of that statistic. Yeah. And so how you can help kind of create that awareness and, and bring more people in um, who might have a, an interest in helping. Yeah, thank you. Yep. I, I don't have any uh, negative feedback. I think you should be really proud of yourself. I thank thought you, you did a really good job. Um, I, I would echo the emotional connection that was created right off the bat. That's hard to do. Mm -hmm. And you, you did a really good job with that. Um, I mean, if there was a <clears throat> better grade than an A to give you, I would give it. Thank you. <laughs> Figure that one out. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, so not to fit in exactly, but this reminds me of something we have been working on in innovations with Fisher's Police Department, um, and that is that they have an issue where people will do everything except for call the police when they see suspicious activity. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is um, they will post it on their Snapchat story. They will post it on Facebook, I mean, you know, depending on how old they are, whatever. They'll text their friends about it. They'll, you know, post it in their neighborhood, um, you know, their neighborhood chat or whatever, right? Um, they'll do all these things, but they won't pick up the phone and call the FPD. Um, and so, so that's something that our, that our police department is, is facing in terms of like, how do we get people to call us? Um, and in that case, I don't think it's necessarily a lack of people don't, you know, I mean, everybody knows 911. Um, and it's not like it's difficult to, to find the Fisher's Police Department phone number either, right? And, and just an instantaneous Google search. Um, but yet people aren't doing that. And it, and it makes me wonder about your thing too. There's, um, you know, you see these things happen and you tend to soldier on and maybe you call your mom and say, I saw this awful thing today. I saw this guy hit the, his dog with a shovel or whatever. Um, but, but why are we not taking action? Um, so, so it almost seems to be like a parallel issue, right? And, and how do you get, how do you change the behavior for, for all of us, right? Such that it becomes something that we're willing to blow a whistle on. And, uh, and I, 
and I, and I don't have any answers for you, okay? But I'm just saying, you might want to look into, is it, is it called the bystander effect? Have you heard of this? Where we, like, we see something, but we kind of feel like it's someone else's responsibility to do something about it, so we're right. just kind of like, do, 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 and don't take action. But something you may want to research okay. and, and look into and how can we combat that, not only in this, in this situation, but also um, anytime we see fishy stuff. And working with that to talk to FPD because there are some anim animal abuse laws yeah. uh, on the state in state statute and locally that they can um, even contacting FPD can help. Yeah. <laughs> Other thoughts for Taylor? 